Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle. This is my latest edition of what I like to call New Album Spotlight, where I put the spotlight on a new album that has just been released to recommend it to you guys, an album that I really have been enjoying and that I think is worth your time and attention. So today the focus of the episode is Pattern Seeking Animals and their latest album only Passing Through, which came out April 1st, so a very recent release. Uh, this is of course a project that kind of came out of, of several members of Spock's Beard. John Beghold is kind of the main writer and kind of mastermind of this project. He was a writer for Spock's Beard for uh, quite some time throughout their especially post Neil uh, output. Um, and of course he's brought on board several members of past and present Spock's Beard, Ted Leonard on vocals and guitars. Uh, we've got Jimmy Keegan on drums and uh, Dave Maros, long-standing member, founding member of Spock's Beard on bass. So uh, this is a really cool project. And what's interesting about it is this band kind of thinking about them in relation to Spock's Beard. And when Pattern Seeking Animals first came out as a group, I believe their first album was released in 20, 2019. It was kind of hailed as like, well, this is like a little bit of Spock's Beard Jr. or something like that, like a lighter Spock's Beard. It has that same flavor, but it's in a different sort of context. But I think what they've been doing with subsequent albums is kind of breaking through and showcasing their own individuality as a group, that they aren't Spock's Beard, they're a new entity. And what an entity they are. <laughs> they're an incredible band that stands on their own foot, that aren't just a clone or a different iteration of Spock's Beard. This is its own thing and I think that really is established here on Only Passing Through. It kind of began on Prehensile Tales where they were starting to break through and form their own identity um, but I think it's fully realized here on this album which is just an incredible release. I love Prehensile Tales. It came out in 2020. It was one of my favorite top releases of that year. I thought the band really excelled. They were just just, it's a great combination of great production, great instrumentation, just everything sounds pristine and they have a great combination of great sense of melody, but also adventurous spirit in their instrumentation and in exploring different genres and styles. It's just, it's right in my lane. It's right exactly the music that hits me hardest, you know. I love music that's is melodic and has catchy hooks and things that I can grab onto and and that are that are memorable and that I always come back to and can sing along with but the they have an adventurous exciting spirit that they're willing to go to different areas they're willing to go into these extended instrumental passages and do things in different genres a jazzy style here more of a kind of a western feel in this section um you know they can throw in horns violin all these different instruments and soundscapes but yet it still is grounded in great hooks and great songwriting. That to me is what they accomplished on uh, Prehensile Tales and what they continue to accomplish on this album. Just an incredible band that needs to be heard. They're one of the premier uh, progressive rock bands going right now, in my opinion. After only three albums, they've really established themselves as quite a force. And I believe their record deal with Inside Out was for three records, so it's kind of an interesting question mark of how they'll continue forward after this release. Will they sign for more records? Um, will they kind of move to an independent style thing? Hopefully there's something that continues because this band needs to continue and this music needs to be heard. So that's really kind of the overview for me of the takeaway of this album is the band really coming into their own, really the fruition of what they promised with their last album is fully in bloom here. And I just really love it. Just like the last record, it has excellent production values. Everything sounds pristine and clear. Um, it has some great melodies, great hooks, great songwriting, great poppier moments, but it also has some great adventurous instrumental work that really showcases all of the band members and what they're able to accomplish. Just the beginning, starting through kind of the the tracks proper. Everdark Mountain is such a great opening track. It's short, it's like under three minutes long, but it packs so much of a punch. It's like Prague sometimes has to go through these big epics to throw in all the things that they want to do, um, but this is just a perfect compact piece that is the perfect three-minute Prague song. You know, it has so much baked in and really is a satisfying uh, package of music. Um, it kind of is an excellent start because it just 
hits you with an excellent burst of energy right at the outset. There's kind of a folky vibe to this. There's like a little bit of a ukulele uh, style playing here. Um, and Ted Leonard's voice is just so clear and it really cuts through. I think they wanted this to be the first track of the record to really showcase uh, Ted Leonard's voice, that he's such a prominent figure in the group. And it's a great balance between this kind of folky ukulele sound, but a harder edge rocking number. It's just a great balance of sounds that's really unique and special that starts this record. That moves into I Can't Stay Here Anymore, which to me kind of evokes the spirit of prehensile tales. It's very much in line with like Here in My Autumn and Raining Heart in Heaven, this kind of like cool uh, six minute prog song that goes through different styles and moods. Um, has some great uh, guitar sounds, meaty bass riff. I love the the rhythm section here. Uh, Dave Maros and Jimmy Keegan just really hold down the fort and have these excellent grooves that go throughout the whole entire album. They're just really in the pocket and just perfectly uh, playing their parts here. Um, just an essential piece of the band, I think, is that rhythm section that provides the backbone to all these all these tracks. But this is just a master class in, in this kind of world that I'm talking about, this pop prog kind of world where it's there's definite adventurous music going on, but it's a great catchy song with memorable choruses and hooks. It's another great feature of the album moving into the next track, Time Has A Way, is just the different sounds you hear. Just with the keyboards alone, they're really experimenting with different sounds that are really special and fun and, and creative that just draw you into the music and really catch your ear like, oh, that's a cool sound, that's interesting. And to me, that's what keeps your interest throughout this album and really makes you excited to uncover what's coming. And, and on even repeated listens, it, it allows you to kind of uncover hidden depths and hidden little gems of sounds and, and little parts that are really exciting to listen to. Time Has a Way just opens with this grand instrumental section. This is like the epic of the album. It's 13 minutes long, but it begins with like four and a half minutes of just proggy goodness. You know, it's just, it goes throughout so many different styles and switch ups and different time signatures and different instrumentations. There's some keyboards, there's some horns in the background, there's some violin, there's like a flamenco style section with this Latin flavor. There's like that kind of Western, spaghetti Western style vibe with this kind of horn. Horns. It gives a cinematic scope and style. It's just this big epic that just really holds up to its name with this epic cinematic scope and style. I really love it. It's just right in my wheelhouse of what I love. And then, of course, the vocals kick in with some great rocking sections, instrumental flourishes with dramatic horns, violin solos, spaghetti western backdrop with Ted's vocals. A uh, really unique sound, and it really lifts up at the end with swelling uh, strings and horns and soaring vocals and just makes for an epic piece of music that is amongst the best stuff that they've done. I love it. As a big prog nerd, this just ticked every box for me of, of just really cool, varied, interesting, progressive rock. I really love it. And then to kind of cool down after that big prog outburst is Rock, Paper, Scissors, which is a beautiful ballad with these plucking strings and violin. Ted's vocals are on center stage here talking about kind of this child theme of, of children's games like rock, paper, scissors and things like that kind of leading towards adult uh, weightier problems in the future. Uh, really a beautiful track, a super gorgeous and engaging melody. Another really standout track from the album. Much Ado gives Ted Leonard a chance to shine. He's the writer of this track. Starts with a killer guitar riff leading to a pounding rhythm with some atmospheric keys and then some skillful acoustic guitar accompanied by piano. Uh, Ted's voice comes in, we get a killer groove leading to an anthemic chorus. Just really a great showcase for Ted Leonard, both his guitar playing and also of course his vocals. Just one of the best vocalists in the business. I really love hearing him throughout this record. Such a highlight. Only Passing Through is more of a shorter kind of uh, ballad-esque song as well featuring Ted's voice and some beautiful strings. Uh, it gets a little bit of a heavier beat during the choruses but then kind of lays back in this kind of symphonic lush feel. It's a really beautiful track as well. Said The Stranger is kind of this galloping song that kind of evokes again that kind of country western uh, vibe a little bit of touches of maybe some electronica style sounds in the keyboards. Um, so it's a really cool juxtaposition and it just moves along at a fantastic 
pace. I just really love this track. It's really fun. And then Here With You With Me is just a fantastic ending to the record. It, once again, they kind of switch things up and go for another style. Um, it starts off big and anthemic before settling into a laid back kind of groovy feel, which kind of almost evokes this kind of R&B soul vibe with these really soulful vocals. And then you hear this kind of electronic uh, sitar kind of sound in the background with these soulful harmonies. It's really, really dripping in this really beautiful harmony and soulful melodies. Uh, it's really a great ending to the album. It kind of continues from there and has this excellent build-up that has these lush soundscapes and great swelling vocals and, and gives this this album the epic ending it deserves with this track. Just every track hits hard. It, it's, it's its own thing. Every track kind of is unique in its style, but it sounds like the band. I think that's really expertly done with these bands when they're able to have their own unique, identifiable sound and yet each song kind of is its own thing and, and is varied and unique in, in the track listing. So I think they pull that off. And of course, there's two bonus tracks as well, which are both excellent too. Uh, I'm Not Alright is another Leonard written song with some flute and acoustic backing to begin with Ted's voice cutting through. Um, it kind of has a more restrained dramatic pre-chorus before hitting hard with a hard rocking chorus. Little bit of a bluesy flavor to this one, especially in the guitar playing and some great guitar soloing from Leonard. Uh, Just Another Day at the Beach is kind of a fun, bouncy, Beatles-esque kind of power pop song, maybe even in line with like Jellyfish and things like that. Just like its name, uh, Just Another Day at the Beach, it's just kind of like a casual uh, feel of a song with just kind of that beachy vibe to it. A really fun, catchy song that um, really is a great addition to the to the track list here as kind of a cool bonus feature. So really, really enjoy this record if it's not apparent. This is a, an excellent release. Highly recommended, especially if you love uh, Spock's Beard. You know, this is kind of a no-brainer release. But like I said, what really makes this album special is that it sets itself apart from, from Spock's Beard and establishes this band as their own... A thing and I think that's really special and I'm really proud of the group and what they're able to accomplish and that they have crafted something so special that just every track is just so beautiful and as each one came up when I was first listening it just like I just had the biggest smile on my face of like this is just really incredible stuff it's just really connecting with me and this could place highly as one of my favorite records of the year it's that good and they're doing some live performances coming up so check those out if you're anywhere near those areas i believe they're playing uh as part of ross fest and then on the cruise to the edge so should be cool to finally see them performing live and to see what that the experience of this music is in a live setting maybe it'll elevate it even further which is hard to imagine because it's already pretty elevated for me so definitely strongly recommended hopefully you guys will check this one out thank you so much for joining me in this review uh hopefully you guys are enjoying your music out there please check this one out and put this in your rotation if you're into the same kind of music as me this is definitely up there with some of the best and so thank you guys so much hopefully you'll subscribe if you like what i do here i try to cover a lot of the major new prog releases in this new album spotlight series uh, because i'm trying to shine a light on new prog music that it's just as good now as it was back in the prime period of the 70s there's just so much good stuff being released if you're willing to dig and, and really research and find this great music so thank you guys so much for your time um please join me in another video i'd be very grateful so thank you guys so much and i'll catch you guys in another video bye <laughs>